Charging through a video game, mowing down wave after wave of faceless grunts, it's a sensation that can make anybody feel like a bona fide badass. Whether you're swinging a broadsword with reckless abandon or relying upon the personal touch of your own two fists, the weapons you can use make all the difference in the sort of gaming experience you want to have. But developers know this and will often try to fill their games with tools of terror that will gradually ramp up in scope and lethality. But not all weapons are created equal, and in amongst the razor axes and rocket launchers, they're sit weapons whose usage is questionable at best, and more often than not, quite frankly, bizarre. But listen up, my friends, if you dismiss these weapons that are going to be appearing on this list, then you do so at your peril, as these are the games whose stupid weapons definitely pack a punch beneath their peculiarity. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are nine video games that make stupid weapons absolutely awesome. Number 9. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess A Fishing Rod The Legend of Zelda is a long-running and beloved franchise for gamers the world over, and some of its weapons and items have become iconic within the gaming community as a whole. Whether it's the hook shot, the fairy bow, or the master sword itself, few of the tools tucked impossibly into that green tunic are anything short of absolute badass. How strange is it then to find that one of the most useful items in the game is in fact the humble fishing rod. Originally only used for meager rewards and the occasional empty bottle, the rod truly shines in the game's epic four-part finale battle against the major spoilers incoming for a 16-year-old game alert, Ganon Dwarf. In that final phase, whilst going one-on-one -on -one with the King of Thieves, Link can cast a line over his shoulder and Ganondorf will actually follow the lure, leaving an opening for Link to strike. In a game of bombs, boomerangs, and even a ball and chain that you can chuck at your enemies, nobody was expecting such a simple rod to be the clincher in that final bout. Maybe that's why Ganondorf found it so distracting. Number 8. Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain A Supply Crate If you're looking for something to straddle the line between awesome and a deliberate deep dive into insanity at the same time, Hideo Kojima is a pretty safe pair of hands. In the franchise destroying fifth mainline entry from Kojima's beloved stealth games, Venom Snake has access to a plethora of equipment to infiltrate enemy bases, as well as a fair few weapons for players opting to have a more violent time of it all. After getting access to the mother base, Snake can even call in supply drops, ensuring that he's never without whatever's needed in the field. And during the tense confrontation with ruthless sniper Quiet, before Snake can use any of his toys, he first has to find the stealthy assassin. Once her position has been established, Snake can get a shot in first, sneak up on her, or do the sensible thing and call in a supply drop on her very head. In fairness to Quiet, it will take two separate heavy crates of military equipment on the noggin to knock her out, but in terms of simple solutions to difficult problems, you've got to respect the rather lateral thinking on this one. Number 7. A Wheel Bloodborne Unless you're trying to speed run it with a Guitar Hero controller, you don't really have time to mess around with anything that can impede your ability to succeed in a From Software title, and Bloodborne is no exception, so making sure you have weapons attuned to your character build and fighting style before fighting the next eldritch horror is a must. Add to this the bleak darkness of the world and you realise you're in a realm far removed from the joke weapons from more friendly titles. How surprising is it then to find a bloody wheel of all things sitting in a messenger shop? Although a device of torture is one thing that you would expect to find in the nightmare hellscape that is Yharnam, the ability to throw one over your shoulder and wield it like a club is not one that anybody was expecting. More unexpected still is just how useful such a weapon can be in the hands of a skilled strength or arcane character build, one of only two weapons that can reach a strength S scale, and with plenty of other power stacks to boot, this clunky wheel would actually appear to be one made of fortune. Number 6. Resident Evil 5 A Rotten Egg Now Resident Evil 5 has a lot of guns, assault rifles, shotguns, the ones that are attached to Chris Redfield's body that he uses to punch a boulder into a volcano, and when you're fighting for your life amongst the mutated and virus ridden undead, anything high caliber or explosive can be the difference between stopping them or joining them, but if all else fails, can I offer you an egg in this trying time? First appearing in Resident Evil 4 as a way to heal or stun Ganados when it was thrown, the cornerstone of the fry-up returned to the roster in Resident Evil 5, with the ability to deal small amounts of damage to oncoming Maginis. Whilst regular eggs will buy you a small amount of time, the rotten equivalent is another beast entirely. Hurting the player instead of healing, the egg can instead be thrown to cause a whopping 1000 damage. That is more than a shotgun and enough to take down a basic enemy in one pungent hit. How do you like your eggs in the morning? Well, apparently, right in that zombie's eye socket. Number 5. The Lord of the Rings The Fellowship of the Ring A Swordfish Now, compared to the mammoth success and legacy of the Two Towers and Return of the King video games, very little is said about the 2002 adaptation of the first book in J.R.R. Tolkien's genre-defining trilogy. Unlike the two following games, this was actually adapted from the novel instead of the movies, and so the game had a decidedly lukewarm reception compared to the sequel 
treatments, but it definitely managed to one-up them in a way that just could not be beat, and that was you could replace your sword with a fish. Whilst playing as Aragorn, the player can track down Gollum in a secret side mission and chase him to a lake where he finally slinks away, but not before hurling a fish at the unsuspecting player. Once the obvious hurt feelings have subsided, Aragorn has the option to now equip this real-world swordfish as a weapon. What follows is an opportunity to carve through the hordes of Mordor with the most powerful weapon in the game in a display so bizarre it makes Tom Bombadil look sensible. Number 4. Worms WMD A Dodgy Phone Battery Worms is a series of games which has made a legacy of turning the weird and wonderful into terrifying weapons that can wreak havoc upon unsuspecting foes, with anything in the surrounding postcode often at risk as well. Whether you want to pilot a sheep with a superhero cape around the map, call in a literal carpet bombing, or lob Monty Python's own holy hand grenade into the mix, there's something for even the most bizarre tastes here. If we had to pick one weapon with the perfect balance of stupidest name and most destructive power though, it would have to be the dodgy phone battery. Debuting in 2016's WMD title, this throwable item expels its charge in the same way such a title suggests, and that is poorly. Once the power pack comes to rest, bolts of electricity will shoot out at the nearest available worms before passing their charge onto the next unfortunate analid in range for extra damage. Anyone whose iPhone charge doesn't seem to hold for more than an hour has definitely wanted to chuck it at the wall, so how sweet it must be to chuck it at an enemy instead and watch them fry. Number 3. Final Fantasy X A Blitzball Although Final Fantasy games typically start with pretty low-impact battles like clearing out rats, their melodramatic storylines more often than not spiral into final encounters that could best be compared to killing God. In such an encounter, you probably best make sure that your magic is strong, your sword is sharp, and your balls are… Ooh, I'm not gonna finish that sentence. In the long-running franchise's PS2 debut, fans were introduced to Waka, the lovable and devotely religious friend who finds protagonist Tidus, even though it should be pronounced Tidus, wide game directors, it's tied, it's connected to the water, doesn't matter, washed up on the beach at the game's opening. In his day job, Waka plays the land's favourite sport, Blitzball, and such is his love for the game that he often brings his shiny rubber ball as his weapon of choice to battle. Laughable at first, second, and indeed third sight, Waka's techniques actually allow for some tactical infliction of negative statuses on enemies as he levels up. In the late game, once the damage limit is broken, this lethal bit of sports kit can even become the most powerful item in the game, with Waka's attack reels ability potentially dealing nearly 1.2 million damage. From a game infamous for its laughs, Waka certainly has the last one here. Number 2. Dynasty Warriors 8 – A Bloody Boat Despite basically peddling the exact same game to us since the second entry back in the year 2000, Dynasty Warriors and its related Samurai slash Orochi franchises have maintained popularity due to their steadfast refusal to budge on their painfully repetitive yet deeply satisfying hack and slash model. However, after realising that there are only so many ways you can interpret swords, axes and spears, Koei Tecmo started to diversify their weapon choice with choices like tomfers and nunchucks. As time went on, they started to get a little wacky with their choices, before completely jumping off or rather setting sail over the shark with their eighth mainline entry, Q Huang Gai, who dropped in with a large curved piece of wood strapped to his forearm, sporting a blade across the underside. Initially referred to as the arm blade, the true function of this bladed bucket becomes apparent in Huang's Muso special attack, where he jumps onto the weapon and begins sailing it over the heads of his enemies. The developers even abandon all pretense when designing the ultimate arm blade by flat out calling it the Imperial Warship. Climb aboard, sailor, because this assault on historical accuracy sure is an awesome voyage. At least it ties into the character who was famous for sending fire ships against his enemy, but still, watching him use this in battle, it is deliciously stupid. And number one, Red Faction Armageddon, Mr. Toots. Largely absent from the gaming landscape over the past decade at this point, the Red Faction franchise is one which holds a firm place in many gamers' hearts for its sci-fi rebellion storylines and its largely groundbreaking environmental destruction mechanics. And in amongst the gritty revolutionary war and desolate wastes of Mars' surfaces, you wouldn't expect a lot of room for stupid weapons, but Red Faction Armageddon packs an overcorrection that you will never see coming. A reward for completing the Red Faction Armageddon storyline once, Mr. Toots is a cute and cuddly unicorn in the same vein as other joke weapons that have come before him. Held facing backwards from the player, this hapless mythical being will look around peacefully at the environment, but when danger approaches, players can lift his tail and launch a rainbow beam from his nether regions that obliterate anything in its path, complete with an appropriately squeaky sound effect and uncomfortable expression on Mr. Toot's face. Things don't get much more stupid than a tiny unicorn's laser bumhole, and it doesn't get much more awesome than a plasma beam that destroys anything. This is Mr. Toots, and he's a goddamn icon. And there we go, my friends. Those were nine video games that make stupid weapons awesome. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me 
me over on Instagram at RetroJ, but the O is a zero, and it'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. You, my friend, listening to this video, you are never stupid. You are a big ledge, and I think that you are awesome, and you need to treat yourself with that love and respect that you bloody well deserve, all right? And do not let anything tell you otherwise. You deserve love. You deserve happiness. You deserve success, and I want you to go out there and smash your life goals today. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.